it's hard to argue with Boxing Wave's logic. It really is, you know. Like, um, say what you like about Triple G in comparison to Wilder. He's managed to compile three belts and has done two pay-per-views. And he's now in a quote-unquote super fight with Canelo. So he's made moves in the ring and outside the ring as well. Now, like he said, you can say it's because Wilder is black. I still don't put food on the table. You can believe that you're actually detecting the default with the model, but that doesn't make it work. What did Chuck D say? He says, the problem is this. We got to fix it. Oh, there's a lot of rap references. And this is what I was saying. If you don't have a common sense approach to boxing, if you're going to sit there and say, well, that's the mandatory, and he's got the belt, the belt's green, and was black, so I need it. it doesn't work. You need events that the fans and the writers romanticize about. I'm going to keep repeating it. Battle of the Long Count, Thriller in Manila, Rumble in the Jungle, St. Valentine's Massacre, No Mass. If anyone can't see that rematching Berman Stavern, somebody he's beat already by a UD to win the belt, is not going backwards, then I can't help you. I cannot help you. In all truth, he'd be actually better off giving up the belt and just fighting Ortiz. It would put him in a better position. It just would. Ortiz is the guy available. He's the guy looking for a dance partner. Not Joshua. Joshua's trying to make champagne moves right now. Now, you don't like it. I'm not saying I like it. It is what it is. He's making them champagne moves. And who knows? Someone might knock Joshua's block off in the next fight and he go back in the queue. Nothing's guaranteed in boxing. You can have the A side right now, but it just takes the knuckle side to knock you off your perch. It is what it is. The Brits are flying the flag. Cool. Now let's see if Wilder can find somewhere to pitch his flag. Because he hasn't pitched the flag yet. Make a star-studded event with Wilder. And I'm not saying, listen, it might flop. See, the thing is, I have a feeling... There could be an agenda there, but it, you at least you put it to the test. Where if Wilder flattens Ortiz, oh, he was never all that anyway. He never fought nobody. He was old. You know I mean? But if that's what you're worrying about, if you're worrying about things like that, then you're not prepared to gamble. How are you going to get in the game? It's like Ward. I'm not going to go over England to fight Carl Frutch because of the judges. What might do, dude? Really? Well, that's what Kovalev fans are saying. American bias. Ward got a gift. And I think Koval have won too. But I don't think it was a gift. No, I don't think it was a robbery. Sven Otka, retired undefeated super middleweight champion with the IBF. He's got loads of defenses there. Why doesn't no one talk about Sven Otka? Well, he fought in Germany, which wasn't a hot market at the time. The judges and the referees were a little lenient with some of his tactics. And people are not stupid. They haven't forgot that. So when you talk about the super middleweight division, even in recent times about the Badu Jack James the Girl fight, there are people talk about that unification. This guy didn't fight no unifications, Otka. He didn't fight no unifications. Talk about Kawasaki, Tony, and other guys. Ward, you got to fight the right fight, not for the nice color belt. That's what you got to do. Remember Barrera had that spell where he didn't have no championship belt and he was fighting elite competition, doing his thing. Was not HBO covering them fights? Yes, they were. And yes, I'm using BoxRec. Oh, you're a BoxRec warrior. Well, I'd rather use BoxRec and make sure I get my statistics right and prove my point. Now, if I'm in a live debate scenario where I can't use it and I forget my information, well, fuck it. You win the debate. Right now, I'm going to prove my point. Let's look at his featherweight record. The Nassim Hamid fight was for the IBO belt. IBO. Which most people don't count, including self. When he beat Eric Morales, he picked up the WBC belt. He didn't keep it. Threw it away. Then he went on to fight Johnny Tapia, Kevin Kelly, and lost to Manny Pacquiao. He didn't need a belt. And that was the most popular run of his career. Let me add that to the equation. He beat Morales, Hamid, Kelly, lost to Pacquiao. What did Morales do? He fought Paulie Ayala for the vacant belt that he lost to Barrera and picked up that belt and fought Eddie Croft and Valdera. All WBC sanctioned fights. So, whose run of fights are better? 
out of Morales and Barrera after they had their fight for Morales' WBC belt, which Barrera won. Barrera beat Tapia, Kelly, and lost to Pacquiao. Barrera had the better fights without no sanctioning body. I'm going to call myself LRS1. Logic reigns supreme over nearly everybody. Not belts. Anyone debating me with the logic that a sanctioning body can successfully negotiate a boxer's career into ATG positions is tripping. You're tripping. And if you like, I'm not going to do it now. But there's no need. I will provide a video showing you exactly why. I'll do another two or three if need be. Kel Brook for all his mandatories in 2015. Do you remember who them guys were? Do you guys remember who they were? Do me a favor.